What is a handy loophole you think others should know about? To avoid early cancellation fees for your hotel, simply call them and say you want to bump forward your stay to a week or so later 4 hours later, call them back and cancel. Odds are you'll talk to a completely different representative, especially if it's a big name hotel, and they won't charge you anything, because their computer doesn't tell them to. You can also do this with a doctor's office that charges for missed appointments. I've avoided many fees doing this. When I was really broke for a while I'd go to Burger King and get something cheap. On the back of the receipt it let you take a quick survey and you could get a free Whopper, drink, or fries. So I'd do the survey and redeem it the next day then do the survey on the back of that receipt and kept doing it over and over. Probably not as good as a loophole as a lot of other people's but it sure helped me when I lived paycheck to paycheck. In the UK, there's an insurance comparison service called Compare the Market. The one with the meerkats. They offer a loyalty scheme, whereby if you buy insurance through their site, you get a year's worth of access to meerkat movies and meerkat meals, which gives you 2 for 1 cinema tickets, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and 2 for 1 meals in a lot of restaurants 5 days a week. It's actually pretty useful to have, but insurance is costly, and you're generally going to want to shop around anyway. However, they don't specify the kind of insurance you need to buy. Travel insurance is covered, which means you can buy one day's worth of travel insurance for a UK holiday and get a year's worth of access, which means that for about £1.50 you can get a year's worth of half-price movie tickets and cheap restaurants. If you're spending money on audiobooks, you can get them for free at your local library via Overdrive and the Libby app. This is all well and good, but sometimes your local library doesn't have the best selection. If you're in the US, though, you can sign up for an out-of-state library card for Brooklyn Public Library for $50, and that will give you a year's worth of access. Other libraries such as LAPL have similar schemes and larger catalogs, but I believe some of them require you to pick your card up in person. Depending on where you live, you may also be eligible for a free in-state card. Brooklyn, for example, will allow access to anyone who lives in New York State. What in the hell? In Australia McDonald's have this deal where, if the local NRL footy team wins, Brisbane Broncos, you can use your ticket to get a free Broncos burger, thing is they don't take the ticket, so we can go from restaurant to restaurant getting more burgers. Went to a friend's a few weeks back, and they had 21 burgers, and didn't pay a cent. Hack. In Scotland, and possibly the whole UK, if you're caught speeding by a cop with a camera, not a fixed speed camera, and not stopped at the time, they only have 14 days to send you the notice of intended prosecution. They have to have mailed it first class on the 13th day. I received one after 20 days and got off with it completely. Why pay for porn? If you look hard enough, you can find it for free on the internet. Looking hard enough, aptly phrased loophole. I didn't find this loophole, but my friend did. A few years back, an online store had this promotion where whoever spent the most money over a month would get free round trip airplane tickets to anywhere in the world. My friend, who's a fucking genius, found that one thing you could buy on the site was a gift certificate. So he bought a $25 gift certificate and kept spending it on another $25 gift certificate. So he ended up spending $25 on round trip tickets to Australia. My brother once yelled last one to jump in the pool is gay and then jumped into the pool. However, I figured out that if I did not jump in then technically he would be the last one in the pool and he is still gay to this day. This is so stupid I love it. I used to work at Papa John's to pay my way through college. There was a contest we had where if you got someone to upsize their pizza from like a medium to a large for an extra $2, you got points towards movie tickets. A large was simply $2 extra normally anyways. Anyone that ordered a large, I simply put in a medium and upsized it. I won every fucking week. My coworkers didn't notice this obvious loophole, and it didn't cost the customer extra, so I didn't have a problem with this morally gray area. Free movie tickets every week was a huge in college. Back in 2013, Papa John's had a promo for the Super Bowl where, if you called the coin toss correctly, you would get a voucher for a free one topping pizza. However, the only control in place was you could only enter the contest one time per ML address. 
I created more than 60 mls, half of them calling heads, half tails. 8 free for 6 weeks. Yep I've done similar with various promotions. I own a bunch of domains for work, so I can just create as many mls as I want instantly, which show up as valid business addresses as well. Then when I'm done I just delete them, so I really don't care if they get sold to spam companies or whatever. My high school had a stupid rule that banned you from attending prom if you went to a Saturday detention that semester. I got in trouble and was assigned to Saturday, D Hall, but my girlfriend really wanted to go to prom. I just kept skipping it and they kept adding more until they rolled it into a day of actual suspension. They had no rule barring you from prom for an out of school suspension, so I got a day off and took my girl to prom. What a nod rule to have. Arbitrary nonsense rules are what high school is all about. My brother got free parking for pretty much his entire time at university. It was that golden period when the pay parking kiosks were able to accept credit cards, but before they were actually connected. They'd read a card and check it against a locally stored list of band numbers, and once a month the meter maid would download the transactions, process them, and update the blacklist. My brother found that they'd accept those prepaid gift cards if they were backed by Visa or MasterCard, but couldn't check the available balance, so he'd buy one, use the balance up on whatever, the use the card for parking until the end of the month, when he'd get processed, found to not have funds, and banned. Rinse and repeat. Guy saved probably $2,500 over his degree. I can't remember when it happened, but it was years ago. I think it was next year, or some other canned tea, but if you bought a case of tea then there was a coupon on the box for a free case, except it was on every case, so now you have case hash 2 and another free case coupon. All the tea could be had. When I was in high school I applied for a summer job with the county. As part of the unbiased application process, each applicant was asked to take an intelligence test. The test consisted of about 80 questions. Each question was 4 or 5 line drawings, and you had to put an X in the box next to the one that didn't belong. Pretty easy. I happened to notice, though, that the test paper was two part, which is two sheets of paper that are attached together back to back with a sheet of carbon paper in between. I could peel the sheets apart and look inside, the second sheet just had a bunch of boxes printed on it, and I could see from the first few questions that I'd answered, that the X's I'd marked ended up in the printed boxes on the second sheet thanks to the carbon paper. So, I did all of the questions with obvious answers, and if I was unsure, I just peeled the paper apart, noted where the box was printed on the second sheet, and made sure I got it right. Of course, I got 100%. I figure that, if you can cheat on an intelligence test, you're pretty smart. I'd like to think that you pass the real test. There was a drink machine in college that was $0.75 for a juice. If you put a dollar in it gave you 5 quarters in change. I got a juice every day for months before they finally fixed it. Michigan used to have a law that a minor could not plead guilty to a crime without a lawyer. I found this out by accident when I was 13 and used it 3 more times before I was an adult. What happens is that I as a minor would just plead guilty. They would then give me a sentencing date and let me leave. Then a week or so later I would get a letter stating that it is not legal for me to plead guilty without a lawyer and my case was dismissed or thrown out because of it. I got out of three minor in possession tickets that way. I was working maintenance at McDonald's when they did a Best Buy Bucks promotion. Large sodas and large fries had a scratch off that was worth at least $1 at Best Buy. I would go through the trash daily, pulling out all the discarded scratch offs. I got a free computer that year for Christmas. I also had the poor cashier at Best Buy in tears. She had to manually scan each scratch off and verify the dollar amount. A lot of people at my high school made out like bandits from working at McDonald's during that promo. Because they were bandits, they stole stacks of the cups and shit and all got fired, but at least they got their electronics for free that year. My university was trying to encourage people to walk so, if we download a specific health tracker that's connected to our account, it would convert steps into points. 
the points would get you stuff like free coffee, mugs, discounts for stuff and the most expensive prize, a university hoodie which costs about £30. Now, the health tracking app is pretty basic. It won't let you log your steps manually however it does let you connect with other health apps. I found a health app that would let me add in the steps and I logged in an equivalent of 50 kilometers a day, and in a few days of logging manually, I would get myself a hoodie or two, and I didn't get caught. However, I told my friend about it, and he really perfected the method of getting more steps a day, because apparently there was a hidden physical limit to how far a person can walk in a day, but he managed to trick it by setting his height to be 1 centimeter, and because the shorter you are, the more steps you need to take to cover the same distance. In the end he claimed about 10 plus hoodies and he would just get them for anyone who asks. The uni found it suspicious, so he received an email telling that the activity had to stop unless he could provide evidence that he walked that much. Another friend had a different method. You get points just by being friends with them on the university health website. He also found that he could access a list of everyone who had an account in that website. So he made a python script that would automatically send a request to everyone, earning him points. Write your stories in the comments below. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel.